This is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, rain will continue off and on through tomorrow. A flood watch remains in effect, as does our severe weather alert day. Chief Meteorologist Andrew Dockery has the latest on the flooding threat. Andrew? Yeah, Steve, it seems like we cannot shake this pattern of more rain uh, in these systems every couple of days working through. And they're not just your typical system. These are systems that have plenty of water with it, and uh, that water falling can cause some problems. Problems. Let's take a look at some of the cameras because some of us right now we're dealing with cloudy skies and, and not the rainfall uh, that we're, we're expecting at this time. But models have had this break in there for the past couple of days and we knew that break would be mainly for southeastern Kentucky and portions of the Kentucky River region. Now up to the north northwest, it has not been a break. Interstate 64 continues to look at that rain moderate coming down and it's been there throughout the day and more head. I think you're going to be looking at more rain as we head into the next couple of hours. You'll notice we have flood warnings uh, for Astell County and of course we have many flood advisories that flood watch in place and there is two flood watches. In fact, a flood watch out for a good chunk of eastern Kentucky. You get down into the Virginia counties. It's a flash flood watch for more rain anticipated tonight and into your Tuesday. Temperatures, it's a variety of them. In fact, the mid 40s up to the north, the upper 40s down to the south and temperatures will actually increase overnight tonight, so your low could actually be expected to be in those low 50s for most. Some of us will drop, some of us will increase, all depending on if we get that break in activity. Notice the Kentucky River region, 51, an average low temperature for that area, and the big sandy, those upper 40s, maybe some cooler spots before we start to warm up for your Tuesday morning. So, Steve, it will be warmer tomorrow morning than what it is when we go to bed tonight, and more rain is anticipated before that cold front swings through. We'll break down everything we know at this point coming up in a few short minutes. All right, thank you, Andrew. Well, this rain could cause some problems soon for some rivers and streams in Kentucky. The Red River, for example, is rising much faster than predicted. Meteorologist Adam Berniston is in Powell County, where officials are keeping a close eye on the rising water. I'm here along the Red River in Powell County, where right now it's not causing any flooding issues. However, as the river rises, Powell County emergency management officials tell me they're keeping a close eye on some of the low-lying areas around the county. As steady rain continues to fall across much of the region on already very saturated grounds, there is nowhere else for the water to go besides ponding on roadways and running off into many rivers and creeks. In Clay City, the Red River stage is nearing 12 feet, which is still below minor flood stage. But with another few inches of rain expected through Tuesday, the river is expected to start causing flooding issues. According to Steve Asbury, the director of Powell County Emergency Management, Clay City's low elevation causes many roads to become covered by water. And when this happened, he advises drivers to avoid these areas. Even just because you have a pickup truck doesn't mean that you can make it across a flooded roadway. It doesn't take much water to float vehicles off the roadway. And once you're over the ditch, then it gets even deeper. Now, while many low-lying areas here in Powell County could see some flooding from this week's rain, fortunately, by Wednesday, the water levels on the Red River should be receding fairly quickly. In Powell County, meteorologist Adam Berniston, WKYT. Emergency management also says there is a concern with rock and mudslides with the rain we are receiving this week. A death investigation is underway after a Pike County woman was found dead in her driveway Saturday morning. WYMT's Marianne Fletcher has the latest on that. Saturday morning, the body of 44-year-old Michelle Smith was found in the driveway behind me. Apparently there was a possibly an assault that started maybe in the house that led outside and at some point a vehicle uh, may have been used in this, in this situation. Kentucky State Police Trooper William Petrie says a possible robbery may have also played a role in her death. The investigation led to possibly maybe some items being taken from the house inside and looked like there may have possibly been a struggle. And he does not believe this to be a random act against Smith. Apparently, whoever did this uh, knows the person that was deceased. Denise Gooseling grew up with Smith. She says Smith was loved by many in the community. Her love for living, her love as a parent. Now, she was the epitome of um, 
being a good mother. Trooper Petrie tells me this type of investigation is never black and white, and right now they are going through each piece of evidence before making a ruling on the exact cause of her death. In Pike County, Marion Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Coming up at 6, we'll hear more from Michelle Smith's friends who say now they are praying for justice. Kentucky State Police are investigating after a body was found off US 25 in Williamsburg today. The body was discovered on the Kentucky side of the Kentucky-Tennessee border near a save-a-lot just north of Jellicoe. We have just learned that it was a man that died. Police say they believe he died sometime yesterday, but did not, they did not get the call until about 1130 this morning. Police say there are suspicious circumstances surrounding the investigation, but did not elaborate. We hope to have much more on this coming up at 6 as well. The man accused of killing 11 worshipers at a Pittsburgh synagogue in October appeared in court this morning for an arraignment. 46-year-old Robert Bowers pleaded not guilty and requested a trial. He is facing 63 counts, including federal hate crimes and firearms offenses. Federal prosecutors say Bowers stormed the Tree of Life synagogue and killed 11 people. Police say he made anti-Semitic statements during the shooting and targeted Jews on social media. The U.S. Department of Justice is considering whether to seek the death penalty against Bowers. Time is running out for Congress to find a compromise on border security and government funding. They have until midnight Friday to reach a deal. Talks broke down because of Democrats' demands to limit the number of undocumented immigrants that can be detained by capping the number of beds in ICE detention centers at 16,500. Democrats want the Trump administration to prioritize detaining immigrants with criminal records over families. But Republicans say ICE detains criminals and a cap would hinder that mission. Cutting down on the number of beds, which would actually force uh, them being released into the United States. I know that's not going to be supported by this administration. The president has said he wants $5.7 billion in border wall funding. Right now, congressional negotiators are looking at between $1.3 and $2 billion for a border barrier, mostly new and replacement fencing. Virginia's Governor Ralph Northam still insists he is not stepping down over a racist photo printed in his medical school yearbook. Northam apologized, but later said it was not him in the picture. He told CBS this morning's Gail King that he believes there is a reason the photo surfaced all these years later. And what do you think that reason is? That we are in a position to, to learn. I will focus on race and equity. That's something that for the next three years is going to be my commitment to Virginia. As for Virginia's lieutenant governor, Justin Fairfax, impeachment proceedings against him were put on hold even as a second woman has come forward to accuse him of sexual assault. CBS News has learned Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos' hired investigators have turned over findings to law enforcement. They are trying to figure out how the National Enquirer obtained private photos and messages from Bezos. Enquirer staff allegedly claim to have a naked selfie and other lewd photos of Bezos. The staff ordered the publish the pictures not to publish the pictures. Uh, if Bezos dropped his investigation. CBS News law enforcement analyst Paul Vialis thinks someone Bezos' girlfriend, Lauren Sanchez, confided in was the likely leaker. The highest probability of risk here of where this leak came from would be Sanchez. And, and whether it was her brother, whether it was a friend, whether it was anybody. A source close to Bezos' private investigators told CBS News they conducted multiple interviews with Michael Sanchez, Lauren's brother. Denver, Colorado teachers went on strike this morning after failing to reach a deal with administrators on pay. This is the first teacher strike in Denver in 25 years. The teachers union and Denver public schools met Saturday in an attempt to reach a new contract after more than a year of negotiations, but each side left disappointed. The school district says schools will remain open during the strike and will be staffed by administrators and substitute teachers. But the district has canceled preschool classes because there's not enough staff to take care of the children. It is a time of year that can cause some headaches for people tax season. And as tax refunds make their way back, some people are noticing a smaller return this year. WYMT's Connor James has more from our newsroom. Connor. 
Steve, from deadlines to deductibles, there's a lot to keep in mind while filing, and there's a lot of questions people may have, like why is my return smaller this year, or will another government shutdown affect this? Jeffrey Holliday, a certified public accountant, says a reason for lower returns may be higher incomes, along with decreased withholdings throughout the year. He says they're typically only three to four hundred dollars smaller, which he knows people might have been banking on, but that money was spread out into their pay over the course of a year instead. We're not seeing the a big decrease, and when we do see the decrease and you look at it, then you're seeing, well, hey, withholding decreased because the federal government, when they enacted the new tax laws, they did change the withholdings. People got more take home pay. Holiday says it's important to remember that even if a government shutdown does happen to still file before April 15th, things may be delayed if a shutdown happens, but still file and file sooner rather than later. Connor, thank you. In our newsroom, we'll have more on that later today as well. Now heading over to Wall Street on this dreary Monday afternoon, the Dow closes down today more than 53 points. Women dominated at this year's Grammys. I'm Stella Escobedo in Los Angeles with a wrap of the big winners. And the rain chances increase as we head into the next couple of hours. A full breakdown is coming up.